Hi there, I'm Lorna Reeves of My and My Events and in this session we'll be talking about Zoom settings and Zoom security. So let's head on over. So from your Zoom platform and your Zoom account dashboard, you're going to click uh, settings. You're going to first hit the, um, all of these drop downs um, and we'll go through each of them and what they do. You're always, always going to have a waiting room activated. This enables you to control who lands in your meeting. If somebody's in your waiting room and you don't recognise their name, you do not let them in. It's as simple as that. It's the same as if it were your house. If you don't know the person at the door, don't let them in. Um, so this is where you can control what happens in uh, your meeting. And you also have the ability to customise your waiting room. You can put a logo, your company logo in here. Um, and this is what they will see when they enter the waiting room, which you might want to amend. And you might want to add some more instructions. So you might want to change this to um, something like... And you might want to pop in here something along the lines of something like that, which will just give people um, something to do whilst you're waiting while they're waiting to be let in. Don't forget to hit save and then close those out. Um, so that's what people will see when they access your waiting room. You always want to require a passcode when you set up your meetings. That's set as a default now. Um, and you always want to embed the um, password into the link. That long passcode I showed you in session one, um, that's how this is generated from in here. You want your video, your host video to be switched on and your participants to be switched on too. And we never want to allow anyone to join before we do. So I have that turned off and they say a message that says you're, uh, you're waiting for your host to start the meeting. Don't worry too much about personal ID, but we definitely want people to be muted on entry to the room. And that saves us getting feedback and from dogs barking and children crying um, and keeps the audio clear and the, the space calm when people enter. We want to activate the chat because uh, this is how we're going to do a lot of our interaction but I would um, recommend that you stop participants being able to save chat and um, that way you can control the information that your trainees um, receive. Um, and we also want to allow participant one-to-one -one chat. If you don't want the de delegates to be able to speak to each other one-to-one, -one, you can turn that off. It's personal preference. And I would recommend here that you pop on um, auto-saving chat potentially, um, but you can also just remember to do it at the end of the session. Definitely turn off the notification when someone leaves or joins. There's a really annoying bing bong noise that it makes. So if someone's Wi-Fi keeps dropping out, um, all you're going to get is that bing bong constantly. Um, so your your host can and people can share files in the chat, which is always handy if you want to share a document. And you want to allow a co-host. Um, this way your presenter and your person um, helping you with the tech. Um, you can run as a team and you both have access to the same um, functionality. Okay. So we only want the, we want sharing screen share to be available. This is how you run your slide deck, but we only want hosts or co-hosts to be able to do that. We don't want participants being able to share anything. That's an added layer of protection for you too. And we want to put annotation on. Um, so that we can annotate our screens, which is what we definitely do in our sessions to keep it interactive. Um, and we want to put non-verbal communication in. 
allows people to raise their hand, give you a thumbs up. Uh, if people know where these buttons are, it makes it for a really interactive session. Um, and it's helpful to get participants to be able to rename themselves. If they log in with something like LR99, you want them to be able to change their own name to something more recognisable. We always want the report function on. If somebody misbehaves in a Zoom room, we want to be able to report them. And um, don't worry about captions. I think virtual backgrounds can be fun. They can be awful, so it's up to you whether you leave that on or not. And then this starts to get a bit technical around coding um, and things like that. Um, but yeah, they're your basic functions and functionality. Now, recordings. I always recommend you have your cloud recording as default. Um, and ideally, you want to record the active speaker with the screen share. Um, you can do it in gallery view mode, but quite often seeing everybody on your recording can be quite distracting. And also, um, if you don't have the permission of the people in the room to share their image, um, you can get yourself into some hot water. So have active speaker with screen share. Um, sometimes it's helpful to record an audio file, um, but it's up to you whether you do or you don't. And um, you can turn off um, the display participant names as well. If you don't want to um, have that on there, you can get rid. Um, I usually turn off automatic recording because when I start a meeting I like to do 15 minutes of prep um, beforehand and if you forget to turn that off that then appears at the front end of your video which can be a pain to edit out afterwards. Um, so I start my recording manually. Once I've got everybody in the room and we're ready to start I just go ahead and hit the button to record in the meeting itself. Um, and I recommend you require a password to access the recordings. Um, this just means you can control who has access at any one time. Uh, and there we go. That's about the fundamentals that you need for um, this area. Now, earlier we mentioned um, having recordings. Um, and this is where your recordings are stored. When you do end a session, um, they are stored in here automatically by the name of the meeting the date and um, you've got two files here. Now you can just directly download them, you can directly just share them. So people with the link um, and you copy that and it gives you a link uh, can access the recording. Um, we usually turn off that viewers can download. We don't like viewers to be able to download the recording because that gives us control then of the distribution. Um, and you can check out the files and you can download one or the other. So you can download the video or the audio. You don't have to download both necessarily, whatever works for you. Okay, that is it for your settings and security. If you have any questions, please do come back to me.